And welcome, folks, to another Mark Bishop show. You know, home makeovers, they're popular. There's even a television station dedicated to shows where interior designers transform cluttered homes into beautiful spaces. But imagine the transformation in lives that occur when a once homeless individual or family receives the gift of a beautifully decorated home. Mm, puts the hairs up on my back of my neck, I'll tell you. What becomes a, a lot more than a makeover, it meets a need helping homeless people make their homes more than just walls, but spaces created for them based on their needs, desires, and their special taste. So with that in mind, I have a very special guest that does this necessity with care and love, and her non-profit organization, The Humble Design. So I'd like to welcome uh, Traeger Strasberg. Good morning. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, um, what triggered Humble Design back in 2009, may I ask? Well, I had moved to Detroit, um, and, and anybody knows Detroit in 2008, 2009. It was a really tough time um, for the city. And I started volunteering my time. I uh, met a woman who worked at the nonprofit I was volunteering with, and I soon found out that she was living in a homeless shelter with her children. Up until that point, I had never experienced homelessness face-to-face, and I had a really skewed vision of what homelessness was. Mm-hmm. And when I learned that she had a full-time job and and two children and a, and a degree, I was blown away. When she finally did get into a home, I came down to visit her in that home, and I realized that they were sleeping on the floor with the nest that they were making with their winter coats. Um, everything that she'd ever owned, everything she'd ever collected throughout her lifetime was put to the curb when she couldn't afford to move it. Um, and the, the homeless shelter only allows you with two suitcases right. um, in, in when you move in. So everything was thrown away, and she was just um, trying to make a great uh, into a great situation for her children and trying to keep her chin up. But I went home and emptied out all of my closets, anything I had that was extra. Then I asked my neighbors, do you have anything that you have that you can donate? I asked the people at line at pickup if there's anything that they uh, could donate in the grocery store line, anyone I could, could talk to. Um, and I soon became known as the furniture lady and people would drop things <laughs> off of my house. I would go around with a truck and pick it up. And within uh, six weeks, we decorated her home with the love and care that I would want my own home decorated with. Um, and people kept dropping the furniture off. So I called around and I saw, okay, who's going to bring this directly to families in need? I don't want this to be resold. I want it to go directly to families who, who need all these items. And believe it or not, not only does that um, program not exist in Detroit, it doesn't exist nationwide. So there is no program, uh, a nationwide logistics program that can get your items to families who really need it. Right. And that just blew me away. So in that moment, I think the clouds just parted and I realized what I was supposed to do with my life. Isn't that fantastic? That's a wonderful story. Um, you know, well, look at the good you're doing. I think, it, what is it now? I read 2,400 homes, something like uh, 7,800 individuals you've helped, you know. Uh, what's that, 11 homes per week or something? Pretty incredible for me to think like that. <laughs> to start out how you did, you know. And, and it's interesting, too, I noticed that you, you know, you say most of the time children run past their toys and into their beds. So what does that mean? It, it, will, it will warm your heart and break your heart at the same time. I, you know, when you think about a child who's eight years old and who bursts into tears at the sight of their own bed, their very first bed, and I'm so happy to be able to provide that and that our organization can provide beds for children. But just to run into your bed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the families come home and they get to see their newly furnished um, house or apartment and the kids run past the Christmas tree, pass all the gifts and get straight into their bed, it really, um, for me, shows that they've been carrying the weight as well. Right. A lot of our families try to protect the children from the enormity of what homelessness is by saying, oh, we're camping or, oh, we're just spending the night at auntie's uh, again. But really, kids are so perceptive. And when they see their bed, they know they're safe, they know they're home, and they feel that sense of permanence. Mm. Um, and it really does. It, it gives me, a, I call it my ugly cry. <laughs> I ugly cry every time I watch a child run into their own bed. Um, just every, a simple every time thing I get like to do a, a bed. Home. Oh, isn't that lovely? Eh? A bed. We take it for granted, don't we? So much. You know, you and your husband have helped families transitioning out of homeless shelters. You provide the furnishings, design services, uh, with the organization turning empty houses into clean, dignified, 
and welcoming homes. It's a very simple idea, but it can change a family's future. How do you keep, you know, how do you keep up there? Uh, there must be a waiting list at Traeger, you know. how? To, I know you're in, what, Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Seattle, San Diego. Are you being asked, like me, to say, hey, can you come to Tucson as well? I mean, you must get this every day. We would love, I mean, my goal is to be in every city who needs us, right? We would love to expand and help. There are so many people who need our services and so many people who want to help. You would be amazed at how busy our warehouses are, filled with volunteers, buzzing around people who just want to help their community um, and people who have stuff. Every time I give an interview, I, people glaze over because they start cataloging all the stuff in their house that they want to give to us. Um, there's so much stuff out there. We we um, recycle about 900,000 pounds of furniture per location per year. Wow. So it's really incredible. But to get into a city, we need the funds, right? We need to be able to get a warehouse and, and to um, have employees and to be able to run the logistics. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when we talk about new cities, I always encourage people, hey, don't wait for us. If you want to start donating to a family in need, like, let's go. But if you work for a corporation or you are a family that is able to help us, Uh, get into your city, we would love to have that conversation. Okay. Well, I do some work with uh, volunteer work at the moment with uh, a new startup for homelessness and marginalized people. And uh, this could also be utilized well and truly. So we've got to find the place. But, you know, there's a bit to it. I mean, you've got to donate is one thing, volunteers another, but giving furniture, uh, all of that combined to make what you do and, and do it well. Uh, let's talk about the holiday deco days and what's being revealed there. Sure. So, I mean, we do 11 homes a week every week of the year, but Christmas is so much fun. The holiday season is so great. We get to play Santa Claus and we get to donate a Christmas tree and all the Christmas gifts. And when the kids <laughs> leave for school in the morning, they leave an empty, cold house or apartment. And when they come home at two o'clock, all the volunteers are there to welcome them home to a warm, comfortable decorated home with their names on the beds and Christmas presents under the tree and they cry and we cry and we get to hug. And most recently we just uh, filmed a family who was in a house fire right before the holiday season and they lost two children to the house fire and one of their children was burnt and you get to see that little girl walk from room to room and get so excited and have such joy through tragedy in this one moment where she thought was just the worst year of, of her life. Right. And we're able to provide that moment of relief and joy for her and her family. And it just brings me to tears every time I watch it. Yeah. I, I tell you what, uh, you'd be wrung out with tears every day, wouldn't you? You've got such a big heart. God love you. <laughs> what was your latest project, Drake? Where, where else have you been recently? Um, well, so we started this um, campaign called No More on the Floor. And we started in all of our cities. Um, our newest city is Cleveland. Uh, and um, we were our No More on the Floor campaign really just highlights that we want to get children up off the floor and into beds. So we've, um, we've uh, furnished 700 beds last year for children, um, and this year we want to expand that and get that number to a lot higher. So our No More on the Floor campaign is at HumbleDesign.org, and also you can watch our TV show that we did. We were on the CW, and now we're on BYU TV, and you can watch that online, which is just basically our TV show is turning the camera on what we do every day, which is meet with the family, get to know them, furnish their house in one day with the help of volunteers, and then watch them come home. And you get to see me ugly cry, which is a bonus, and you should definitely <laughs> tune in just for that. And congratulations, too. I mean, you've earned it. You won a couple of daytime Emmys. You know, uh, just another little, uh, you know, string to your bow there. And I notice on your site, because we're going to have Thanks. to quit, but I do notice on your site how lovely it is with these corporations that are supporting you. Uh, Fruit of the Loom, an article, Premier Development, Progressive. Uh, it's important that you have these, too, isn't it? It is. And U-Haul provides all of our trucking and some of our warehouse space. And and it's these corporations that really get to show their community that it's not just talk, that when they say that they're helping their community, they're actually making a difference. Progressive brought us to Cleveland. A U-Haul is helping us out in all of our cities. CB2 is helping us in Chicago. And without their help and without their volunteers from their uh, corporation and their, and their corporate dollars, we couldn't do what we do. No. 
No, absolutely fantastic. Well, folks, look, you've got to check this out. I bet you if you look around the house right now, you, I mean, I've done it already and I've only <laughs> interviewed her. I can tell you the stuff I'd love to be able to give away. My wife has gone through this week alone and said, well, we're going to get rid of this, rid of that. Now I have a, you know, a place to do it to. But the reality is Humble Design, right? Very simple, Humble Design, all one word, dot org. Uh, it's a non-for-profit, not-for-profit and all the wonderful work, Traeger. It's an absolute, uh, you know, I, I can't find the words to thank you for what you do for Aww. people that... <laughs> thank you so much for highlighting us. It means so much to us. And, and, and it's people like you who highlight good things that are going on in the country that um, actually help us and, and sustain us. So thank you. Thank you, Traeger. And, and to your hubby too. Have a happy holidays and, and keep up the good work. You too.